Um, well, you just gotta you just gotta play the game. You gotta prepare for their offense. Um, you gotta prepare for what the coordinator has been giving you. Um, you know, he's gonna he's gonna do what he's coached to do. He's gonna um, hit the reads they tell him to hit. Um, he's gonna be able to you know he's still an NFL quarterback. He's still able to sling the ball around. So um, we gotta prepare for what what the coordinator has always given us, and um, he's been pretty consistent. Who has a bigger challenge? You guys trying to figure out what a young guy's gonna do in his first start, or him coming in with that first start? Having should have a pretty good idea of what he's going to see from you guys. Um, I, you know, I think the challenge is equal. You know, every time you go out into an NFL game, it's going to be a great challenge, um, regardless of who you're playing. Their NFL talent. I think every day a star is born, and you you find you know some guys you're like, oh my god, this, who's this guy? And then he comes out slinging it. Um, and so you always got to be aware of that you always got to prepare. You know, like you're you're playing their starter, you're playing the guy, um, and that's what we're doing. How do you feel this team has handled being two and zero so far? Um, I, I, I think they've handled it indifferently. Um, I don't think anybody, you know, is sitting there like, oh, my God, this feels good. You know, guys are just like, hey, when's the next game and who's the opponent? Um, and that's the way you want it <clears throat> because you, you got to go 1-0 and every week. What you did last week isn't going to help you this week. Uh, and I think everybody is, is aware and cognizant of that. And the coaches do a great job of making sure guys just stay on details and keep doing what they've been doing. Richard, uh, Quan Alexander looks like he's good at football. Yeah, he's really good at football. <laughs> Is he better football than you thought? thought or do you have a sense of yes? No, I saw his tape. Uh, I knew he was really good. Um, that's why they paid him the big bucks um, to get him to come out here. Uh, you know, obviously he did well in Tampa's scheme, but he, he he's really built for the scheme that we run and the way we what we want our linebackers to do and how we diagnose. Um, he's great at running and hitting, and that's that's what he's doing incredibly well. He's also covering his behind off, so he deserves a ton of credit. Probably not paying attention to any outside noise, but what, what's your reaction to the idea that this team needs to make a, another big trade to, to acquire another piece to add to the defense? Um, I, honestly, I I haven't, like you said, I haven't paid attention to any of that, and I don't think I, I think we're we're good with what we have. Um, you know, I, I you know we leave it to the front office. I don't make those decisions, but uh, obviously they felt comfortable with what we had going into the season. That's why they cut the guys they cut and kept the guys they kept. Um, really confident in our guys at every position. Uh, it's unfortunate we had an injury at tackle, um, but thankfully we'll get Joe back at some point during the season, and we believe in the guys that we have to, to hold down the ship until he comes back. So uh, I think we, we're really confident in our, in our DBs and our corners, um, our linebackers, our D-line, our O-line, uh, our backs, our quarterback, obviously, and our receivers. So um, we're, we're ready to go. Well, has a go ahead. Sorry, kind of following up on that in a bigger picture sense. I know you're a big NBA guy in, in that league. A lot of guys have taken agency of their futures, where they're going. Do you sense a sea change in the NFL where guys are noticing that and, and maybe trying to do it themselves more? Well, I, I think this is. I think you see that in a big way. Um, I think it's different than the NBA because they have a lot of control in terms of their contracts and the money and and how that goes. Somehow, you know, they'll get traded to a team and then the team will pay them to go home. Um, and that's odd. I don't think we'll ever get to that point in this league. But I think you do see, you know, very talented players finding their way out of situations that they don't want to be in. Um, Antonio Brown, multiple times, you see him uh, switching teams. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, Odell situation was a little different, but uh, he found a situation that he's more comfortable with. Um, a team that, that really appreciates him and, and, and the way he sees it. Uh, I think you see the same thing with Jalen Ramsey and, and what he's trying to do. I don't think he's trying to create big noise. I think he's just trying to get to a place where he's more happy and more comfortable. And I'm sure the owners don't don't like that. You know, I don't think they, they ever like to give up any power or for players to flex their power. But, you know, I think it's good for the game. You know, I think it's it's good for the game to, to have – some differences, you know. I don't think we had this this many trades in one year of this caliber of players in probably ten years or so. Um, so I think it's 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 great for for the game. It's it's good for those players and um, it's good for the teams. You know, teams are getting the compensation. It's not like teams are set, trading seventh rounders for these kind of talented players. First rounders are being exchanged. I think uh, people are starting to realize that the first round picks aren't as valuable as they used to be. Um, you know, it's. It's what can you do for me now? Then rather than waiting and developing a player, you know who may develop, who may not develop. You're getting players who you know what they're going to be, you know who they are, and you're exchanging, you know, the the first round draft capital, you know, which you don't know what it could be. You hope the player is going to pan out how you see it, but you never know. When you say it's good for the when you say good for the game, uh, do you mean in the sense like 
it's more excitement for fans because there's more movement? Or how well, it's just it's just different. You know, it's just more 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 drama, more story storylines. You know, at, how many years have we gone where you're like, oh my God, all these proposed trades, all these crazy ideas, but no, you know, nobody's ever going to trade a first rounder. Nobody's ever going to trade for a guy. Nobody's ever going to get out of their situation. So. Um, I think it's it's good for the game just because it's it gives something different, you know. It gives it's not as predictable, you know. I think it's been stagnant for the past few years, and you you hear about trade rumors, you hear about all this noise, but nothing ever actually happens, and now it's happening. I think it's also good for the game because it forces organizations to treat their players better and makes them want to stay and be loyal. I think I think that's going to be I think that's going to be the case going forward. I I do think that's uh, a, another benefit. Um, that's going to come from this is that I think these organizations are going to treat their players with a lot more respect and and admiration and just appreciation. I think sometimes you you say, hey, we got you young and you're cheap and we, we, we can just ignore you and treat you however. And I, I think players are becoming, you know, more more volatile and, and more frustrated and more angry and doing their best to get out of those situations. Um, and so hopefully these organizations treat these players better and, and players move forward and it works out well for both sides. How well did Akello play the first two games, and what's the biggest difference between him now and last season? He played great. He played fantastic. Um, I think the tape speaks for itself. I think his numbers speak for themselves. Um, he's tackled incredibly well. He's covered incredibly well. Um, he's been poised. Uh, he's been in the right spot playing mistake-free football. Um, and, and like I've said numerous times, uh, he's he's not really a different player. You know, it's just the, the mental approach that he takes to adversity, to, to things not going his way. Um, to 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 the play calls, the 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 slips, the, the the you know whatever the refs are doing, you know he just doesn't let it bother him. He's unbothered by anything. He's un, unbothered by the outside noise. He, he's unbothered by circumstances, adversity, whatever the case may be. He's just a guy on a mission, and, and it's cool to see. Is that the key for him moving forward? How he responds to any potential adversity that comes his way? Um, it's it's been the key. I think it's the key to every player, honestly. If I'm being honest, it's the key to to any successful player is how they respond to adversity and how they move forward and and progress. Um, and he's doing a phenomenal job. The the switch is flipped for him, and I'm I'm excited to see him. What was your assessment of Ronald Blair's performance Sunday? Oh, it was outstanding. Ronald Blair was 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 outstanding. He was a menace. Um, and he, and he didn't have to do anything crazy out of the ordinary. He didn't have to get out of his technique. He played within a scheme and just just made fantastic plays. Um, and it's good for him. I'm happy for him because he was able to get some sacks. You know, I think the sacks are, are coming more often for our D-line, and they're spreading out pretty evenly. Uh, I think just about everybody got one. Um, and I'm happy for all those guys. I think I think we're going to have a few guys who, who get double-digit sacks this year. Um, and, and it's because guys are just playing hard and playing within the scheme. Nobody has to do anything crazy, out, outlandish. You know, guys just standing in their rush lanes, being disciplined, and, and guys are getting there. What came from? Juan and this defense being you know, maybe even better suited than Tampa's. What is it about this defense uh, that helps him? Well, he doesn't have to think as much. Um, you know, I think sometimes in, in different defenses, you when you scheme too much, it's paralysis by analysis. You got a guy. Where's where's number two? Where, what is this guy doing? Is the motion happening? Did that just change our entire coverage? Am I blitzing down? Or am I on my back? Am I up? You know, and I think that for anybody, it 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 puts you at a disadvantage. You know, on defense, the. The best defenses are defenses that, that are simple enough for guys to just play fast. You know, you, rec you see what you recognize, you, you play fast, you play what you see. Um, and in this scheme, he's, he's able to do that. He's able to play fast. He's able to, to, to see very similar looks over and over. And he's able to recognize them and, and run and hit. You came from one of the best home field advantages in the league. Um, what was it like coming in here to Levi's Stadium? And you know, they haven't had a winning record here for a home game since you came in on Thanksgiving. And 14. So what do you also have to do to flip that script? I think you have to win. I think no matter where you're playing, no matter what stadium you're in, um, in order to get the fans enthusiastic about, about coming to see you, especially you know at this stadium where it's kind of hot and there's not a lot of shade, uh, you have to put on a good product. And that's on us. That's on the team. That's on the players. Uh, and that's on the coaches. And I think we're, we've, we've done that as best we can the first two games. You know, And, and the fans have shown up to away games and, and droves. Um, they really did feel like home games. And we look forward to putting on a good show at home and, and giving them good products. Did, did the heat, does the heat impact visiting teams? Here? Obviously, that's on the sunny side of the field. I mean, having just played in Tampa and Cincy where there was where it was hot, can you? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think the, the elements always have a, have a factor on, on the game. Um, it has a factor on your fatigue, on, on 
um, how how well your D line's rushing, how well their O line will hold up. Uh, but it has an f- effect on both sides, um, and that's the cool thing about football. Both sides have to fight the elements and, and find a way to win. You said winning helps, but like you said about the first two games, fans traveled out. Um, do you have any words for the fans that'll be here at the stadium on Sunday? Yeah, just just you know, for the fans that'll come out, um, just be loud. Uh, we appreciate the noise. Um, obviously, not when our offense is on the field. You know, they they appreciate some quiet. But when defense is out there, man, have a good time. Um, enjoy this. Enjoy these games. Um, and we'll do our best to put a great product out there and, and have both sides happy. Um, we appreciate your support. Go Niners. Thank you, sir. Thank you.